Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Stock Market Technical Analysis. I'm gonna try to keep it short on this one, about 10 minutes or so. Follow along, hopefully I can make you some money. Leave me a thumbs up if you guys find some value. We're gonna start out with triple Qs today. Looking at the hourly chart, we have basically a gap fill of the, the drop that we saw just recently. So you can see here we've popped, they popped above this uh, pattern, this kind of bearish rising wedge pattern popped above it and we gap filled and we're starting to sell off. So we'll see how, uh, how today plays out. I, I'm not ex exactly expecting just a complete big sell off today, but I think we've probably seen the highs in this most recent multi-day rally. So what I'm doing, I'm now covering my long position. I talked about how I actually went long down here at support on triple Qs looking for that gap fill. We now have that gap fill, so I'm flipping short again. So I am short looking for a move down. And where do we go? Well, if we flip over to the daily, I think we could easily see, you know, I'm looking at about 354.50 area. That's about this, that's this former support right in here. You can see that support shelf. So if we're gonna make another leg down, that's really where I'm expecting us to go. And you know, that's likely probably gonna be the end of this downward move, uh, unless unless obviously we get like a complete market crash. I'm not calling for that, but I am looking for another leg down. The dip buyers, you know, they're in there buying the dip. They think they're right because they've been right the last five or six times. But as far as I can tell, it looks like we're about to roll over. Looking at the SPY here, going back to the hourly. Again, SPY had this bearish rising wedge pattern or you know, on the daily, it's more like a bear flag. They popped it up, we've gap filled, easily recovered the gap right there. And now I'm looking for that to top out and us to start to sell down. Where do we go on this one? Well, on the daily chart, I think we're heading down at least to 429.07. Uh, there's also some support right here. You can see I have it marked out, extend that out. We could run down and hit that 425.50 area. And that's likely gonna be the end of that move. So we'll go ahead and look for that. Again, I am now short triple Qs. I covered, you know, closed out my long position. And so far it's played out really well. I mean, basically, if you go back, I talked about how I shorted up here, you know, and that was a drop of, you know, 4% or so. And then we rallied off the low down here for a move of another 3%. And now I'm looking for a move down to, again, that 354. And that's gonna be a drop from where we're at of about another 5%, four four and a half percent or so. Cause I'll probably cover a little bit ahead of that level. Okay, so that's that, moving on. Okay, one way to play the, the move down, if we're gonna get a move down, then we should have a pretty impulsive move up in volatility. Again, volatility recently expanded. Now the dip buyers think that that was just a dip, it's all over, we're off to new all time highs. They may be right, but if they're wrong, then there's gonna be this aha moment where all of a sudden the dip buyers realize that no, this wasn't a dip buying opportunity. We're going to we're going to make another leg down, and you should see a spike in volatility, another spike uh, up from here. So what I'm looking at is VXX. You can see here on the daily chart we have bullish divergence. It's been building for a while, right here. You see the momentum, how it's been moving up in the. PPO and the RSI, and yet prices continue to kind of drift lower right there. So there's your bullish divergence. And what I would look for is at this moment, I think it's probably a good spot to, to nibble on uh, volatility long. And that's what I've done this morning because I am looking for the Qs and SPY to really start to roll over. I think they've, they've peaked out on this uh, gap fill bounce back, and now they're gonna start to roll over and it's probably going to be impulsive. So look for some sort of impulsive move and then and then the volatility to really expand. So I would look for a move probably at least to, you know, I, I think we're at least likely going to get up to here again, which is about, uh, it's about 3106. That's a level of resistance. So a move up to 3106. We already hit it once before though. So I think Maybe the ending move could be all the way up here at 3616, uh, or there's another level. I've got several levels marked out at 4863. So again, that would be a move, uh, you know, from where we're at, if we're gonna get to 4863 of 
That second target's about 38, uh, 39%. And then the, the, this first target would be about 20%. So all in all, pretty good risk reward ratio. Uh, I am going to start to take a long position in VIX, looking for that, that next leg lower in the markets. Okay, next up, gold. So gold basically has, you know, this is the area I'm looking for it to hold. It uh, doesn't look like it's going to hold right here. I was going for a potential head and shoulders pattern. So you can see the right shoulder the, or the left shoulder, the head and the right shoulder. doesn't necessarily have to be a valid pattern, but it was just a potential um, we also have, if I roll out, we have kind of major support. Uh, this is coming off the uptrend line, really from 2018. You can see all the tags of support here. There's another tag. Uh, let me just mark that out. It's, it's basically right here at the bottom. There's another tag, and you know maybe we're going to head down and hit it again. So there, those are all potentials. Uh, we still have bullish divergence. When I look at the PPO, see the momentum, how it's trending up? And when you look at the RSI, you know, it's kind of an equal, equal, uh, <clears throat> equal trend line, but on higher highs. And again, so your last divergent low was right there. That was that tag right there at 17, 1680 was a divergent low. Um, <clears throat> that's why I'm not looking for too much lower prices. But yes, we could hit, hit this trend line down here at 1710 or 1715, somewhere right in there. As long as you hold that, then you'll likely keep the divergences intact. You're not going to burn through those and take those out. So that's what I'm looking for to happen. If that doesn't happen and we start to break down, then something else is going on. So we'll want to make sure we stay on top of that. But as of right now, I still view a lot of this as a buying opportunity. Uh, looking at the weekly, you can see as I roll out, major resistance right there at about 1791. Uh, and we're below that now. We're kind of chopping around through it. You can see it's there it is right there, 1790. And recently we're just kind of chopping through it. Lots of volatility right around this level. So that could mean that we're in a, you know, indecision time. We are consolidating. You know, there's just lots of chops. So we have to just take it, take the chart for what we're getting and, you know, play it day by day. Right now I still think we have bullish divergence. And I still am viewing this as a longer term bull market and we're down near a level that I want to look to be accumulating a position. So it's not all at once. Again, divergences don't mean that, okay, there's a bullish divergence. Tomorrow we're going to just spike higher. It means that we're in the area of accumulation and we're likely going to get a trend reversal soon. That's weeks, months, we don't know. But it's an area of accumulation and that's where I'm looking to build my position gold miners key level that i'm really keying off of right now if i go to the weekly chart on the gdx is right there it is sitting about 31 38 you can see resistance 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 there there and then support 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 we're just slightly below it right now uh, by a couple days but if you look at the daily chart we still have bullish divergence there it is see the momentum how it's moving up on the RSI and right there on the PPO. And yet we continue to kind of drift lower. So I think this is likely, you know, again, this isn't just an, a daily call. I'm not saying today's the low, but I think this area right in here is the area that we're gonna kind of bottom out and then reverse. So what I'd look for, if you wanna be conservative, you could wait for a recovery of that key level, which is about that 3138 right up here. And, you know, if we bounce up and recover, then that was a false breakdown or a bear trap. And that was likely the, the low. OK, so that's one that's one way to play it. Um, that is what the charts are telling me is going to happen. But if you want, you know, you likely want to wait for that to happen if you don't already have a if you don't already have a long position in the miners. I think it's uh, you could wait for that. You're not missing out on much. And then I think you're likely off for the next trend higher. Okay, Clorox. I haven't talked about, about this one for a while. This is a long trade setup. Clorox is heading down to what looks like major support. It's down here about 157, right in that area. If I roll out on the daily chart, you'll see this is coming off the 2011 lows. And we've got a nice clean uptrend line. Lots of tags and reactions of support. There's another one. And we haven't hit it since. So you can see we're heading straight down. That's going to be a key area of support right down there. Also, if you look at the uh, at the P 
PPO and the RSI, bullish divergence has been building for a while. Uh, let's see here on the, yeah, we're just barely hanging on to bullish divergence on the RSI right there. But we have it on the PPO. So I talked about this a couple weeks back. I was looking for a move down to about 157 area. I think a tag of that trend line is a key level of support. And that's where I'd be looking to go along this thing. So just a trade setup. It's not an you know actionable trade yet, but ideally you'd want to see that hit. We can narrow it down as we you know if we continue to fall down to that level, we'll start to zoom in on the hourly chart and figure out kind of hone in on our entry. BlackRock. I think BlackRock is basically at resistance right here. We did a gap fill, clean you know clean gap fill. I think I think we're likely rolling over. Why do I think that? Well, for one. Negative divergences have been building on BlackRock for a while. We have breaks of major trend line support. So there's your uptrend line for, you know, coming off the March 2020 lows. There's your break. You did a back test. You failed. We've hit this support line right here at 841.84 multiple times. There's one, two, and then we just hit it for a third time. We got the bounce off of that like expected. I talked about that when we were hitting that. I was expecting a bounce. And now I think we start to roll over with the markets breaking that support line and heading down to the next level of support about 790.50 is uh, the next good level of support. So I like it right here and now as a short trade uh, for that leg down. GN, GNRC, I let this one go yesterday. I didn't like the recovery that they were doing. It was looking pretty strong. I let it go, small loss on it. You know, we just took the short right here. So what the loss was, you know, roughly what? about a 3% loss. Again, got to lose small sometimes, can't get them all right. So I don't like the recovery of this trend line right here. There's your upper trend line. This little whip down below was just a bear trap basically or a false breakdown as of right now. So I let that one go and same with net. Where's this guy at? Let me plug that one in and then we'll, then we'll wrap up. But here's net again, same deal. Here's your uptrend line here. And we had a little bit of a breakdown. Again, that's why you usually, when you see a breakdown, you wanna see an impulsive breakdown. You really wanna put that level in the distance. And we didn't, it wasn't quite that impulsive. I took the short, they recovered the trend line and so far they're holding above. So I don't like that one either. I let that one go yesterday as well for a small loss. So those two trades just didn't work out. Again, we can't, they don't all work out. Some do, some don't. Again, we have to manage the trades, let the winners run, and cut the losers short. That's the name of the game. That's all I have for right now, guys. Leave me a thumbs up on your way out. Check out the Stock Market Technical Analysis course. Link in the description below, and I will catch you guys later.